Welcome back to the Red Dice Diaries. Have you ever wanted to roleplay in the legendary times of King Arthur? But we're not talking about the courtly intrigue and the chivalry of the later French romantic tales. No, no, no. We're talking about a darker, grimmer version of Arthur. A Celtic warlord trying to seize power and weld together a fractured Britain that has been abandoned by Rome and is being fought over by native and invading tribes? Well, if the answer to that question is yes, then you're in luck, because this is the world of Age of Arthur, a Dark Age role-playing game using the Fate system, which has been released by Wordplay Games, and is the subject of this RPG review. The book in question is written by Paul Mitcher and Graham Spearing, and it's a historically inspired fantasy RPG. I came to be reviewing it after the book was recommended to me as a good example of a fate fantasy game following my review of Legends of Anglaire, which I'll put a link to down below, and after I expressed my desire to run my own fate RPG in the fantasy genre. The game uses a version of the Fate system based on the Diaspora hard science fiction RPG and has some minor differences with the current version of Fate Core as released by Evil Hat Publishing. However, the two are largely compatible with only minimal conversion work required. The book is just under 300 pages in length and like the Fate Core books from Evil Hat, it's at the upper end of the pocket-sized bracket, making it very easy and convenient to carry about. The layout of the book is clear, using a single column with the occasional box out to highlight important context. The book starts with a brief description of Arthur, and the authors have chosen to focus on a grimmer, more historically based Celtic version of Arthur. However, and wisely in my opinion, they've not felt entirely constrained by the restrictions of history, and certain concepts from later stories have been included. And an element of the supernatural, the fae, giants and dragons, to name but three, is also incorporated into the setting, allowing the GM to tweak their campaign to have as much or as little fantasy and as much or as little history as suits their particular need. They follow on with a rundown of the different tribes of humanity inhabiting the fractured kingdom of Britain at this period of time, and some notes on the various languages and names common in the country. All of this is very interesting and immediately conveys the idea that Britain is a country at war with itself, and this level of conflict and intrigue within a setting can only be good for the amount of roleplay potential it brings and offers. The game moves on to creating characters, and this will largely be familiar ground to anyone who's played Fate Core before, and involves choosing aspects, which are story tags, for instance, grizzled Saxon veteran or elderly druidic priest, skills and stunts. An Age of Arthur outlines a process for creating aspects where you come up with events or tales that involve your character and you come up with a few bullet points for each of these tales and then pick an aspect that reflects how your character changed or how your character was involved in that event. And the events that it recommends are the beginning of your life, how your tale begins, the next part is where it differs slightly from the traditional fate core method of generating aspects. It suggests that the GM picks a single event from a timeline in the book. For the game that I'm going to be playing in shortly, our GM picked a war in 480 where Arthur helped push the Saxons out of Britain. And each character is assumed to be involved in this event. You write down a few bullet points detailing your involvement. In the case of the event that was chosen for us, my druidic priest helped to influence the weather so that it favoured Arthur's warband. And you pick an aspect of how you're involved in that, and the other players do likewise. And this is a great thing since it already starts bringing in how the characters are involved with each other and how they may have met. 
The next you pick is an event that defines your character as a hero. And this is followed on by an event of your own choosing that caused significant change in your character. And with this last one, you are encouraged to incorporate other player characters into the event if you can. The three of us in the game that I'm surely going to be playing, we picked a giant attack on our village. And how we dealt with that was all interlinked between the different characters and the aspects that we chose. There's also a final optional stage where your character can have sworn some kind of oath. Whether that is to avenge your father's death or as in the case of the character I've created, bring the people back to the old ways. The oath itself becomes an aspect, giving you the chance of a bonus when you're pursuing it. This process was great and very easy to do as far as I was concerned. And certainly some of the players seem in the game that we're going to be playing in soon seem to find it far easier than the default background process in Fate Core. Wealth and equipment comes next and is quite heavily abstracted in the system. PCs have a wealth skill that adjudicates what they can buy. You can buy items that are equal to or lower than your current wealth skill. Weapons and armor use damage and absorption ratings which either add or subtract to damage caused as appropriate. And there's a brief discussion of how to create magic items. Effectively you give each magic item an aspect and one or two stunts that help cover and portray in the game the powers that the item has. And I think abstracting such things like this is a wise idea since the focus of the game throughout the book and as far as I'm concerned always should be on characters rather than their equipment. However the rules give you enough leeway to hinge role playing hooks and opportunities around signature items should you so wish. And since Age of Arthur uses the fate system it also wouldn't be difficult if you like a bit more crunch and a bit more texture in dealing with your equipment to port your own favorite fate equipment system into the game with fairly minimal effort. The basic game rules follow and are fairly standard fate rules with a few little differences. The basic system is you roll four fate dice. Each dice has two plus sides, two minus sides and two blank sides. You add up what you've got on the four fate dice and you add the resultant number to the PC's skill ranking. If it beats either a set difficulty or an opposing character's role, then you have succeeded in whatever you're trying to do. Creating an advantage, which is a concept from Fate Core, seems to be called a maneuver in Age of Arthur, but it's largely the same. For instance, if you were in a hut and there was a barrel of oil you may roll to create an advantage to tip the oil over and bestow the aspect of slippery floor on the scene and you could use that to your advantage and getting used to the slight difference in terminology really doesn't take that long at all the book follows on with a great mass combat system for running battles with large armies and although it seems like a simple system on first reading I think this would do an extremely good job for catering to large scale combat and it looks extremely polished. The system makes use of what's come to be known as the Fate Fractal in Fate Core, where, which means that basically anything within a game can be defined as a character with aspects, skills and stunts. The armies are defined as characters themselves with strengths relative to the size of the largest force. So for instance if one army has 100 men in it and the second army has 50 men it will be half as strong as the larger force. Players use their character to apply maneuvers or advantages to the battle which then plays out with the two armies making their roles against each other. The nominated general of the army makes the role, although there are also provisions for magic influencing the battlefield in a similar way to maneuvers. Most character roles come down to placing aspects on the opposing force, which the PC's own army can then use once for free. This is a great system since it's not too complex, it keeps everyone involved and it's making use of the versatility of the fate rule system. And it's certainly something I plan to use in future games, whether they be Age of Arthur or entirely different genres.
we then come on to one of the other high points of the system for me which is magic now there are a number of different types of magic listed in age of arthur from shape changing to druidic curses to the new christian faith each type of magic requires you to have an appropriate stunt before you can use the skill that is associated with it and age of arthur has not one but a number of the finest simplest magic systems that i've ever seen for fate and this is a big claim since there are innumerable versions of magic systems that have been bought out for fate however i stand by this claim since the book keeps it very simple very flavorful without introducing too many unnecessary complications or additional rules one example of this is the shape changing magic if someone shape changes into an animal they gain an additional aspect called form of and the animal name so for example form of the bear or form of the eagle that they can invoke for free gaining a re-roll or a plus two to a roll without spending the usual fate points in situations where the body of the animal would be advantageous the downside is that the gm can compel or use this aspect against the player when they will be in a situation where being in the animal form causes a particular disadvantage all of the different magic types are very interesting and they reflect the culture that they are linked with the next chapter has a more detailed breakdown of the situation and people of britain along with a handy arthurian timeline and a nice map of britain a larger full color version of this is available when purchasing the pdf or hard copy of age of arthur online and this is a very polished and beautiful looking map i think it'll look great printed out on a large poster size piece of paper or card stock for any campaign and it's certainly something i'm considering doing we then move into the games mastering chapter which provides some very useful advice on running an age of arthur campaign and there's also some details regarding character advancement unlike fate core and accelerated age of arthur doesn't use the milestone system to determine when characters increase in power instead it uses a more traditional xp based system where a player accumulates xp or experience points and then spends them to buy new skills or to advance skills no doubt this will appeal to more traditional role players or those who are just discovering fate and require easing into it but make no mistake there is nothing wrong with this as a system and it works perfectly fine however should you prefer the milestone system from fate core again it could quite easily be imported in as a replacement with minimal effort should you so wish there's a handy list of ready-made antagonists in the back of the book now given the ease with which npcs can be created within fate these aren't entirely 100 percent necessary however i think it's a nice thing that they've been included since it gives you an insight into how the designers of the game go about creating their characters and npcs and it gives you some examples of aspects and stunts to show people who may be struggling with their own a little bit the book rounds off with some nicely written and interesting scenario seeds and a complete scenario for the age of arthur game my conclusion is that age of arthur is a excellent book and i love the fact that it's available in both soft cover black and white pdf and hard cover color so if you're maybe a little short on funds or maybe you want to give it a quick look first before you commit to buying a hard copy there is a version of this game to suit all pockets the character generation sequence is very easily laid out and quite intuitive when myself my wife and a friend were creating characters for the game we're going to be playing in soon it took little over an hour from opening the books to having our characters ready and this included creating the village that all of the characters were from the artwork of the book is of a very reasonable standard and nicely conveys the mood of the setting however in the black and white copy that i was looking at some of the artwork was a little dark and difficult to make out although i'm sure this probably wouldn't be the case in the color copy and it certainly looks very nice in my pdf version the book very effectively conveys the mood of the setting a war-torn kingdom riven with strife 
the land crying out for someone to unite the people. And I think the authors deserve a lot of credit for the evocative way they managed to get this setting across. And for how well they've managed to paint their game's version of Arthur. But at no time does the game seem restrictive. Or does it make you feel that you can't tell stories that don't feature Arthur as the main character. And I think this is testament to the skill of the writers involved. If you have an interest in running an Arthurian themed game. Or any interest in running a fate fantasy game. Then I would certainly advise you picking up a copy of Age of Arthur. Since it is chock full of useful information that will be of use in any fantasy or Arthurian based game. It also has a number of simple but well thought out magic systems. Which do a great job of demonstrating how flexible the fate rules are. Without having to bring in lots of additional rules. And these systems could very very easily be copy and pasted into another game. The high points for me of the setting, aside from the wonderfully evocative source material and the mood it creates, are the mass combat systems and the magic systems. And I will certainly be using the ideas in future campaigns of my own. So there you go. If you have any interest in running an Arthurian campaign, whether it's fate or not, or if you're looking for a magic system that's very simple and yet very flavorful within a fate game, or you're considering running a fantasy fate RPG. I really cannot recommend this book highly enough. And that you should probably at least consider picking up a copy of it. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video. And that if you have you'll consider clicking on like and subscribe down below. If you have any comments on it please either leave your comments in the box below. Or hit me up in the Google Plus links. Until I see you next time, thank you very much for watching and for listening. This has been Red Dice Diaries. Take care.